Hey, good morning. My name is Lauren Northup and I'm Director of Museums at Historic Charleston Foundation. And I'm really excited because we've recently found some new artifacts during our investigation of the Nathaniel Russell House Kitchen House. So the Russell House Kitchen House project started because I was sitting in this room and um, my desk was right here and we had long struggled with how we interpreted the lives of the enslaved at the Russell House. Um, when Nathaniel Russell and his family moved in in 1808, they moved in with 18 enslaved people who lived and worked in the back third of this property. Um, but of course, their stories are not held in the written record. And so I was sitting here and um, looked over at this door and the way that the light was hitting it, I could see that um, this board here was hand planed and so you can see the marks from the plane and you know the thinking had always been that this structure had been hugely compromised by later renovations um, but as I sat here and looked at this door uh, it just sort of struck me that this was probably an old door. We involved um, historic contractor David Hoffman, um, a great friend of the foundation. Very quickly we discovered that perfectly preserved underneath an early 20th century drywall was the original plaster wall um, for these enslaved living quarters. At that point, um, I think my exact words were, take it all off. Every brick in this wall, every um, plaster surface, all the lime wash, all of it was made by the enslaved, mixed and built and put in place by the very people who were also held in bondage on this site. We began our investigations of the west wall as we worked our way this way, um, down in these interstitial spaces starting right here and all the way back, we found a rat's nest. Essentially tiny time capsules. Within just a few hours, we had discovered hundreds of artifacts from the mid 19th century. Uh, this is a portion of the button placket from a enslaved butler's livery waistcoat. Uh, and this tells us so much about the daily life of who was living in this space, what they were wearing, what they were required to wear for their job. And uh, it's pretty remarkable to us that this is probably a garment, a fraction of a garment that was worn in the main house. Never before have we known what exactly anyone in the house was wearing. A lot of the artifacts we found related to uh, this sort of daily working life of probably the women who lived in these spaces. We found hundreds of these sewing pins and needles. Um, so if you think about it, someone was handling these in this space and they slipped through a crack in the floor um, or they were <laughs> collected by an industrious rat and um, put into the wall. Another really interesting artifact that we found was this very small lidded box. So this is the lid and this is the base. And um, we had help from conservators and curators at Colonial Williamsburg actually analyzing this piece. So it's possible that this is actually a small pot of like a coal, an eye makeup. Um, you see that all the way back to ancient Egypt and being used for antimony. One of the most arresting finds that we made is this fragment of what appears to be a reading primer. So this has big letter, little letter created in order to teach people to read and write. So under the South Carolina Slave Code at the time, um, it was illegal for enslaved people to read and write. Um, we knew we had something pretty powerful in our hands. So potentially, um, this very small scrap of paper is a tremendously powerful symbol of perhaps resistance, um, but either way, a very exciting find. This is actually the only piece of newspaper that we were able to definitively match to an extant paper in a newspaper database. So luckily for us, it has a very strange word on it, which is Crookshank. And um, my colleague was very quickly able to take this and match it to a newspaper um, in a database. It is from the Charleston Courier, uh, November 11th, 1839. We know what they were eating with. We know what their mattresses were made out of. We know 
what toys the children who lived here were playing with. We know what sewing pins they used. Um, we know so much more now about the daily life of the people living in this structure um, than we've ever known about the family living in the main house. And that is so huge for a historic site in Charleston, south of Broad, um, in the hotbed of secession. These stories that otherwise would be completely lost from the record are preserved by a few rats and the fact that this structure somehow escaped being renovated in the 20th century. So they were just waiting for us to discover and to share.